Stampeda is the racing wooden roller coaster at Port Aventura. This ride has so much potential, but when people talk about the coasters at the Spanish theme park, not many people mention this one. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Find out in this review of Stampeda. Port Aventura opened in 1995 with just two roller coasters. One was an uber intense thrill coaster in Dragon Con. The other was a family coaster in El Diablo. The park had a far west section from day one, but it intentionally had a large chunk of land dedicated for a future expansion. That came in 1997 with not one, not two, but three different wooden roller coasters, all of which were intertwined with each other. The bigger two were Stampeda. This was from the creative mind of John Wardley. Built by Custom Coasters International or CCI, this ride led to a resurgence of racing dueling wood coasters in the late 1990s and early 2000s. And it's not hard to see why. This ride looks undeniably cool off-ride. You have a large wood structure and track going every which way. That's especially true because the park's third new coaster in 1997 in Tomahawk is built within Stampeda as well. Tomahawk is considerably smaller, but it is a solid family coaster, also from CCI. But back to Stampeda. This ride is themed to a high-octane wagon race. Midway through the queue line, riders can choose which side they want to experience, red or blue. You walk over a color-coded bridge, and then you have a series of ramps leading up to the station. That have been extensively tarnished by graffiti and vandalism. I find the two sides run nearly identically, so I would pick whichever side is the shorter weight. The park does have two trains for each side. However, in both my visits to Port Aventura, this ride has been running just one train each side. If the line is backed up to the point where you can choose your side, and Stampeda is on one train, expect to wait roughly an hour. Stampeda has a delayed opening, usually opening one and a half hours after the park. I thought I'd beat the crowds by showing up right when the coaster opened, but that was actually the busiest time of day for the ride in my most recent visit. I would recommend returning later in the day to experience this coaster. Stampeda opened with PTC trains, but in 2007, the ride received the Kumbach trains as run with ever since. Not many wood coasters run with these trains, the only other example I know of is Rushbanana at Bakken. Each train is comprised of six cars. Each car has two rows of two, much like the usual PTC trains. But the seats and restraints remind me more of what you can find on the Intamin Prefab wood coaster trains. You have open sides and a U-shaped lap bar. And the latter has very similar padding too. The ride is thankfully far more accommodating than those Intamin creations. The one thing to watch out for though is that the lap bar can lower throughout the ride, and it wants to lower particularly during the bumpy parts. Therefore, I would recommend holding onto the lap bar once checked. Otherwise, you could easily get stapled, which can be quite painful during the rough patches. The best seat in this coaster by far is the front. This is both from an airtime and smoothness perspective. However, it isn't always easy to get this seat. The park usually only admits enough people into the station to fill the next train. You may get an employee that will let you wait an extra cycle for a specific seat, but it isn't always guaranteed. Once dispatched, you hear some angry bulls stampeding. You then roll through the maintenance shed and then head up the 84 foot or 26 meter tall lift hill. It's a decently fast lift for a wood coaster, and you get a nice view of the ride's twisted mess of track to your right. At the top, you turn right and come face to face with my biggest issue with this coaster, the trim brakes. Halfway down the first drop, each side has a trim brake, and you will feel it kick in immediately and noticeably slow the train down. Stampeda did not open with these brakes. The ride ran without them in its inaugural season, and from the few people I know who rode it that year, they said the ride was a lot more intense. They said the laterals were world class, and there was quite a bit more airtime. However, these brakes were added during the ride's second season. Many people point to this as an aftermath of an accident in the ride's first year, where a rider was unfortunately ejected from the train. But it also could have been to reduce wear and tear on the structure, which ultimately would save on maintenance costs. Stampeda would not be the first wood coaster to have that happen to it. If the ride was already as aggressive as people said in its opening year, 
it would have been a bear to maintain, especially on those turns. In theory, that should help the ride run more smoothly. I say that because Stampeda has a bit of a reputation as a rough ride. I got multiple rides on it in 2017. My rides up front were fine from a comfort standpoint. There were some bumpy bits, but most of the ride tracked reasonably well. However, I remember it being very bumpy further back in the train, particularly on wheel seats. In 2022, I was only able to get one ride in Stampeda. The ride was closed during my weekday visits, and my only option was on the final day before we went to the airport on a Saturday. Luckily, we got the front. My ride up there was similar to my 2017 rides, so I imagine it rides similarly further back in the train as to how it did then. But back to that first drop, it's a straight one. Usually these give good airtime on CCIs, but the trim kicks in before you can get those negative Gs. You then rise upwards, getting some weak floater airtime up front, but it is semi-sustained at least. You then have a low, minimally banked turn, you carry some real speed through it, so you get some good laterals throughout, particularly on the blue side because it's on the inside and the turn ultimately is tighter. But it is the bumpiest part of the ride by far. No matter where you're sitting, you're going to get a lot of jackhammering here. The turn rises up towards the end, so this turnaround culminates in a dip back down to ground level. So if you're in the back, you can get a little bit of floater airtime here. Next is a double up. The first hump gives the best airtime in the ride. It is good floater airtime in front. It's much weaker in back, but you'll still get some lift. The second hump is too little speed to deliver negative Gs though. This leads into the second turnaround. This has another dose of strong laterals. This time, the red side is on the inside, so the forces are a bit better on that side. Next is a double down. The first hump has no airtime, but you do get a great head chopper with some supports. The second hump gives a little airtime in the back. You then have a sizable climb into a tunnel. You bleed off a ton of speed here hence why there's an anti-rollback device at the top as a failsafe. But those up front can still get an itty bitty pop of airtime. But those are the last negative Gs anyone will get on this ride. The subsequent turn offers another quick jolt of laterals. When you emerge from the tunnel, you have another low bank turn. It's similar to the first one, except the trains navigate it in opposite directions. So you'll get a neat flyby halfway through the element. As with the first one, you have nice sustained laterals here, but you also have to deal with some bumpiness yet again. Both tracks then connect back up, but not before giving another small spurt of laterals. You then drop back down to the ground and head over a bunny hill. I imagine these at airtime in the ride's opening year, but not with how little speed you have at this point as of 2022. Stampede in as one final turnaround. It's another with very little banking, so you get some decent laterals once again. You then hit the brakes and return to the station to a chime, ending the 3,127 foot or 953 meter long coaster. I already touched on the smoothness, but what about the pacing? Stampeda is not the strongest in this category. The trims definitely hurt the first half, but it still has solid speed and power points, but the second half feels extremely sluggish. The final thing to know is the racing aspect. This is the most notable feature of Stampeda, and it definitely shines here. I love how you spend so much time next to the opposing track, and how the turns are in close proximity. It's both fun, and it gets your competitive juices flowing. So what would I rate Stampeda? I would give this coaster a 5 out of 10. This wood coaster does a lot of things well. I love the racing element, and this ride has some wonderful laterals. However, the ride has a few flaws. One, the pacing. You do not have enough speed to maximize the second half. Two, the airtime. Not all of the hills and drops had the airtime I expected. I presume that's due to the trim. Three, the roughness. This can be mitigated by riding in the front, but it can be a major issue further back in the train, and the complications that you can't always pick your seat. I just wish I could have experienced this ride in its opening year. CCI layouts usually feel out of control, and I imagine it had that characteristic before the trims were added.
and it probably ran at its smoothest too. So those are my thoughts on Stampede at Port Aventura. What are your thoughts on this racing wood coaster? Are you a fan of this ride? Or do you find it too rough? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there will be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.